Around 90% of the world trade relies on commercial shipping, even though shipping is an environmentally friendly and fuel cost-effective transport, it produces about 3% of total global greenhouse gas emissions per year. If not addressed or unregulated, the International Maritime Organization, also known as IMO, assesses that shipping emissions will rise to 50% by 2050. However, that increase could be as high as 250%. On the other side, the European Union estimates that without intervention, shipping will be responsible for one-fifth of global emissions by 2050. These figures are significant when considering that shipping is vital to world trade, hence providing an essential service to global economic growth and prosperity. Extreme weather, ice melting, rising sea levels and ocean acidification are some of the effects of global warming. Already being experienced and if not controlled, it could have devastating consequences for the planet. Global warming is caused by the burning of fossil fuels that release greenhouse gases, GHG, into the atmosphere. GHG are the gases that absorb infrared radiation, trap and hold heat in the atmosphere, therefore responsible for the greenhouse effect, which in the end leads to global warming. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, the most significant GHG are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. CO2 has a substantial impact on global warming due to its abundance in the atmosphere and the fact that it stays in the atmosphere for thousands of years. 87% of all human-produced carbon dioxide emissions come from the burning of fossil fuels like coal, natural gas, and oil. In a report released in 2018 by the EPA, revealed that the transportation sector generated the largest share of greenhouse gas emissions considering the different economic sectors. Over 90% of the fuel used for transportation is petroleum-based, which includes primarily petrol and diesel. In order to address and control the GHG emissions in the maritime industry, in July 2011, the IMO amended the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, known as MARPOL, modifying Chapter 1 and 2 and including the new Chapter 4 to the existing Annex 6. This Annex covers the regulations for the prevention of air pollution from ships and the new chapter introduced regulations on energy efficiency for ships, which included technical and operational requirements to reduce international shipping's GHG emissions via improved ship design and operation. It applies to all ships of 400 gross tonnage and above that are engaged in international waters. The aim of these amendments and inclusions is to decrease the emissions per ton of cargo by at least 13% by 2030 and by 30% by 2050. The two regulatory mechanisms introduced in this chapter are the Energy Efficiency Design Index, EEDI, and Cheap Energy Efficiency Management Plan, SEEMP. The EEDI is a figure for total CO2 emissions per ton mile and a non-prescriptive mechanism that leaves the option to stakeholders of which technologies to use in a chip design. Considering the required energy efficiency level is achieved, enabling the most cost-effective solution to be used. The smaller the EEDI, the more energy efficient chip, de chip design. The total CO2 emissions per ton mile and the smaller the EV, the more energy efficient ship design. This regulation only applies to new ships and those ships that go through major conversions beyond 1st of January 2013. EEDI will be implemented in three phases. We are currently standing between phase one and phase two. EEDI verification is carried out by flag administration most likely on their behalf by the recognized authority. It consists of two stages, pre-verification done in the ship's design state and final verification, which is done after construction and as part of the ship's commissioning trials. SEEMP 
provides a management framework and establishes a mechanism for ship operators to improve the energy efficiency of a ship during its operation life cycle. It works according to planning, implementation, monitoring, and review of a number of energy efficiency measures within a continuous improvement management cycle. It also should incorporate best practices such as better speed management and introduction of energy efficiency technology. According to IMO, there is no specific reference to a need for review and verification of SEEMP content. However, its existence on board must be verified. This plan encourages the ship owner and operator that at each stage of the operation of the ship to review and consider operational practices and technology upgrade to optimize the energy efficiency performance of a ship. Other amendments to Annex 6 add new definitions and the requirements for survey and certification. The inclusion of Chapter 4 in Annex 6 led to modifications in Chapter 2. More precisely, regulations 5 to 10. For instance, the role of surveyors and requirements of surveys, that's in regulation 5, for newly built ships. A full or partial survey in case of major conversions of existing ships. Survey for SEEMP to verify its existence on board ship. Are some of the aspects that are specified in this regulation. This regulation states that EEVI survey and verification shall be carried out according to relevant IMO guidelines. Changes in regulations 7 and 8 deal with energy efficiency certification, making it mandatory for ships to have an International Energy Efficiency Certificate, IEEC, to prove conformity and the responsibility of the flag state administration to prove compliance. Regulation 9 defines the validity aspects of the IEE certificate. It will be valid for the life of the ship unless otherwise invalidated by a major conversion or change of flag or ship withdrawal from service. Regulation 10 specifies the requirement for port state control for energy efficiency. Accordingly, the IEE certificate is the starting point for any PSC inspection. The MARPOL regulations are relevant for all stakeholders in the maritime industry as it covers a variety of areas from design to operational. Implementing EEVI is not easy given the number of stakeholders affected, including the ship owner, shipbuilders, surveyors, engine and equipment manufacturers, between others. On one side, the EEVI will enable the ship owners in acquiring the most fuel efficient ships for their fleets and charters and cargo owners in selecting the most energy efficient ships for their businesses. On the other side, it might put pressure to some shipbuilders, especially the less competitive ones. The implementation of these measures poses a challenge to the shipbuilding industry as new technologies should be adopted and more research and knowledge relevant on how to design an energy efficient ship is a must. A complete awareness of the situation is crucial leading to more investment and efforts with regards to research and development to achieve core competitiveness in the market. A study revealed that in contrast to the shipbuilders, the designers and the research institutes seem even farther away from adjusting to these new regulations and most of them will react to this revolution later than the shipyards. The study also suggests that to introduce leading technologies or research and offer services to the industry, verifiers and other related societies are needed to help the shipyards understand the EEVI and associate regulations. The design institutes also need to adapt, which will be quite a challenge to this sector in several countries. The diagram shows the network among the stakeholders in the shipbuilding industry and the drivers in green, barriers in red, and those that can both propel and obstruct are presented in blue. For example, some of the barriers are skills and information gaps with workforce and classification societies, and split incentives with ship owners or research and design institutes. 
Some of the drivers to EEDI in the shipbuilding industry are corporate social responsibility with social groups and government funding to research and design institutes. The fact that EEDI applied to ships that were newly built rather than to the present fleet, it indicates that its impact will appear gradually when less efficient vessels are replaced by new, more efficient ones. However, some critics claim that the IMO's intentions have been and will continue to be unsatisfactory as there are external influences of the shipping industry in the IMO rulemaking process. This happens because there is a common habit to have private shipping registry companies represent nation states at the IMO. The International Council of Clean Transportation revealed that while the CO2 intensity of many major ship classes decreased from 2013 to 2015, total CO2 emissions from ships increased. For example, the CO2 intensities of bulk carriers and container ships decreased by 6% and 9% correspondingly, 2013 to 2015 but their total CO2 emissions dropped less than 1%. That is because the overall transport supply for shipping increased by about 6% for container ships and 9% for oil tankers. The disconnect between CO2 intensity and total emissions suggests that business as usual improvements in energy efficiency are unlikely to yield substantial reductions in CO2 emissions from ships. The results above show that even though stricter regulations have been added to MARPOL in order to achieve better results on lowering CO2 of shipping, a combination of major technological and operational measures together with alternative fuels or energy sources would be needed. Some of the main technological measures that could be enforced would be to use lighter materials, slender designs, propulsion improvement devices, between others. Among some of the operational measures would be lowering the speed and reducing ship size. Biofuels, electric ships, and wind assistance can also transition ships to carbon neutrality. In addition, the inclusion of Industry 4.0 like Big Data and ICT can positively impact the ship's energy consumption by having real transmission data that allows higher visibility to each voyage and allows collection and analysis of performance data. The maritime world can be severely impacted by global warming effects and GHG emissions in the future if the regulations are not effective enough to lower GHG emissions from ships. Therefore, it is important for all stakeholders in the maritime industry to be aware of the harming effects and reach a common goal that is achievable for the industry. It might not be easy to adjust to these regulations at the beginning, but with government support and cooperation between the main players of this industry and leadership from big shipping nations and companies could help accelerate the pace and meet the Paris Agreement goal of limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. An important suggestion for governments would be to fund and support more initiatives that train current and future employees increase the knowledge in these relevant topics, and more importantly, create awareness. The maritime industry is an interconnected network of many different stakeholders. If there is a synchronization to a greener and more sustainable future between all players of the network, the carbonization of the shipping industry can be achieved. All these recommendations are in benefit of the maritime industry to stay sustainable and competitive in a world that is every day demanding greener companies and approaches.